This week, we are going to look at the pen tool and the way that it makes vector layers or vector shapes. Um, these used to be called shape layers. They're now called vector shapes. And they also use the pen tool over here in the toolbox. So the vector tools in the toolbox are these four. You can see they're kind of um, separated out with lines in between them um, from all of the other tools. So you have the pen tool and all of its sub-menu tools, the type tool where you can create both vertical and horizontal type. You also have tools that help you edit your path, like the path selection tool, which is the black arrow, and that allows you to move paths. The direct selection tool allows you to edit your path. And then also you have vector shapes that are created. Let's see if we can get these. These all are already created vector shapes. The rectangle tool, rounded rectangle, the ellipse, the polygonal tool, the line tool, and then this really cool custom shape tool, which we'll get into. But just to show you the custom shape tool down here, once you pop into it, and it kind of looks like kind of a little ghost-like shape, up immediately up in the options bar, your shapes light up here. And these are pre-created vector shapes that you're able to use for free. Um, there are actually more available if you open this and then sneak into the little submenu over here to the right and choose all. And that will give you all of the shapes that you get when you buy Photoshop or rent Photoshop CS6. This, whenever you see it, will add, ask, be asking you if you want to append, which means do you want to add to the already pre-existing list or do you want to replace this with new ones? Now, since I'm adding all of them, I'm going to replace them because that'll give me all of them anyway. And then the bottom section here you can pull out to look at all of these wonderful vector shapes. Now, let's talk vector for a minute. Um, these are the vector shapes. And what makes vector a vector shape? Um, we didn't talk about it before with the pen tool being turned into selections because we were working with photographic data. And I didn't want you to get too confused by that. But really, when you use vector, some of the biggest uh, qualities of vector that we absolutely love are that vector shapes are enlargeable. And as you probably already learned, with all of our class material and all of the reading, you cannot or should not enlarge any photographic raster image. Um, enlarging raster images will um, create degradation. And a lot of the problem is that you cannot see this degradation when you're working um, and when you, you know, are looking at the monitor because the monitor is displaying at 72 pixels per inch. So, Enlarging in vector is just fine because the other big aspect is that vector shapes are flat color. And you can also create gradients, but primarily work in flat color. And gradients are mostly used in Illustrator. Um, other reasons why we like these vector shapes are because, let me, let me pull one out and show it to you while we're chatting. I'm going to grab the happy snowflake right here. And... I have a little image I'm going to work with, a little greyhound. I love Italian greyhounds. I own two of them. They're my just my babies. And I've chosen this shape. This is a vector shape. I'm going to come over to the fill. And when you click on the fill, instantly we have the swatches. You can also get your color picker up here. So either way, you can get one of those going. I'll get a nice icy sort of blue color. Click OK. Now holding the shift key down will keep proportion. Shift is your proportioner and I'm going to click and drag and just show you this is a vector shape uh, right here. And um, some of the other things about this is that if I want to just come in and edit transform, it says transform path now. The bounding box shows up and I can shift and increase the size without any stress. If you increase 
photographic image like that, you are going to cause real havoc on that picture, especially when you print it. But not true with vector because all you'll, you're dealing with is one color in here and not a complex, you know, pixel, you know, variety of complex pixels in photographic data. All digital photographs are raster based, so you cannot enlarge photographs that are digital. But you can with the vector. The other thing to note is that the edges are clean lines. Like if I print this, the line will stop right along this path line and there is no fuzzy like pixel data that kind of fades out like you would see in raster files. So that's also a quality that we love. You also get beautiful curves. Now this does not really have beautiful curves, because, but you do get this ability of be beautiful curves as we've talked about in the last section because you are not actually drawing the curve the curve is be cre being created for you. And so that's just a little bit more about these. Now, in this process, please do not use the already created custom shapes, these vector shapes. I want you to create your own. So while I'm showing you these wonderful vector shapes, I, I really actually want you to make them yourself. So just be aware of that. Now I'm going to come over here and just throw this out. You can, whoops, I have to press return to accept the size change. And this is the layer that shows up, by the way, whenever you create these vector shape layers, a new layer will show up. Each vector shape has one color to it. So um, as you build different colors, these different color shapes will go on to different layers. Now I'm going to just drag that to the trash can. And I am going to create a path that makes that is a shape uh, around this beautiful Italian greyhound. And I'm going to zoom in, zooming in really slow here with this, but Command Plus or Control Plus does this a lot faster. So I'm going to do that with a shortcut. Whoops. Command Plus. So you can see this beautiful little animal. And what we're going to do is we're going to create now a shape layer. And this file that I created is 5 by 7 inches at 300 ppi. Uh, and I'd like you to create your files at 5 by 7 inches or 8 by 10. Just remember that the more complex you get, the larger the file will become. And I want to go through the process. Now, this, I'm just going to go Command-0. This whole file is 5 by 7. And what I did is I pasted a smaller file into this because with vector we can enlarge. Uh, not the photograph, but the actual shape layer when we're done. So I'm going to Command-plus in again. And we're going to work with the pen tool. And this is so much fun. Uh, with the pen tool, immediately I'm moving up to the options bar because before we were working with a path. Now we're switching gears and we're going to choose the shape. Now, in a minute I'm going to show you uh, clip art and vector art where people sell these uh, wonderful designs so that you'll be able to get inspired and hopefully maybe consider uploading your own work onto a site and making maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred dollars a month depending on how many you upload and the quality of them. And so I've chosen shape. Now I want to also pick a fill color and I think I'm going to click again on the fill box, click on the uh, color picker. And I'm choosing the color picker because you can actually come into the image and click around and I kind of want sort of a nice brown gray for right now. Kind of a cool kind of fawn blue color because greyhounds do come in that pretty color. And now that I have shape, this now is going to automatically fill with the color that I have in my fill box. Um, they also stroke. This is new in CS6. And right now you can stroke a lot like what you would find in Illustrator. But the red line means no. I don't want to stroke it. And we can check that out later. But let's let me just show you. This would allow you to not have a stroke. This will give you a stroke, and this will give you a gradient. We don't, we're not going to do that at the moment. 
and it's the same process. So I'm going to zip around this fairly quickly just because I want to show you the main gist. But you have done this before in the last assignment. So I'm starting at the bottom of a curve. This is one curve. And in this case, I'm not going to get every nuance. I want a really beautiful curve. Click and let go. And you'll see instantly a shape layer of vector layers created. And I go up and over the curve, hold the mouse down, and begin to drag. Now, I don't need it to be perfectly around the shape of the dog because no one's going to know what the, what the photograph looked like when I'm finished. So I'm just going for a beautiful shape. Second step here is to option and click on the anchor point in the center. And then I move to my next curve. Now, if I don't have a curve, and I'm not sure if I don't or not, but this looks sort of straight, I might just click and let go, which would create a straight path segment. And then I'll come into the next section. Slight curve, just get a little slight one there. And option click after every curved path segment. Delete. Whoops. The option. Anytime something like that happens, and I want to zoom in, I want to show you this. Um, what happened there, and it'll happen occasionally, is I just deleted the anchor point by accident, which isn't a big deal, but you always want to, like a dot to dot, you have to work chron um, chronologically. And I can notice that all my anchor points are hollow, which means that the path does not really know how to continue. So if that ever happens, just Option or Alt click on your last anchor point, and you'll notice that this will become solid. And that allows you to continue on. Here we go. And then I'll Option, click, and continue on. Now, I want you to see this because you might go, oh my gosh, it's filling the wrong area. Don't worry. As long as you continue on and go around a, a you know, an enclosed shape, it'll begin to understand what you're actually trying to go, you know, place a path around. So I'm just going to option click. Now, as I go, it's possible this solid color will block my image and I won't be able to see what I'm doing. So that's where you can just turn your opacity down. And there, I did that again, darn it. I must have a change in my preferences. And I'll change that here in a minute. I'm going to redo that. Option click. And I'm just moving around the darling little creature. You know, and if you don't like the color, the nice thing is that uh, you can change it. If you just double click on the shape, pop, this pops up and you can say, well, I want a lighter gray or a different color and it'll change for you. Now I'm continuing on and, and I'm really fine to, and good to go because I can tell that as long as this last anchor point is solid you're in good shape and if it isn't just option alt and click on your last section. Whoops. Having a little technical difficulty. Let me try that one more time. Option click. Forgive me. Uh, my computer went in for tech support and it looks like having a little issue. I'm zooming in, and sometimes you have to. I'm going to take the photo off for a minute and just look. And I have a feeling back up here a minute. There we go. I had to back up because somehow I ended up creating an anchor point and that just is good for you to see live because if anything strange happens just step backward a few times and watch as you know steps disappear and then you know now that this is reignited I think we're in fine shape. Let's double check it. I'm really having issues. There we go. And continuing on. Now I'm going to turn the photo layer down.